हेलो गाइस वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल गैमा डाई गैमा एंड इन दिस वीडियो लेट्स डू येट अनदर इंटीग्रल ओके सो द इंटीग्रल इन क्वेश्चन इज दिस गाय इंटीग्रल फ्रॉम जीरो टू इन्फिनिटी e to the negative n x squared times the cosine of pi times x dx. So, like the last video, I'm going to use uh, the Leibniz rule of differentiating under the integral sign for solving this. So, I construct a general function for this guy. But I've just changed, added a parameter alpha instead of the the pi that we had, and you'll see why this is helpful because when we differentiate with respect to alpha on both sides, we have a negative x coming out front e to the negative n x squared. The cosine changes to a sine. Alpha x dx. All I've done is use the chain rule. Now I would like to gather some terms. I would like to gather. Um, I would actually like to multiply and divide by two. So we have the. I would like to take the negative inside. The the two to cancel out with this. Then I would also like to multiply and divide by n. We have an x and we have e to the negative n. X squared. I would like to bracket this, and then the sine of alpha x dx. So notice the bracketed term is just the derivative of e to the negative n x squared, and this is useful because now we can officially do integration by parts. This is the part that we we can integrate over. This is the part that we can differentiate over. So well, we always perform integration both the times. So we have one over two n e to the negative n x squared. Keep the this guy the the function to be differentiated as it is the first time. Evaluate this from zero to infinity minus one over two n. Integral from zero to infinity, e to the negative n x squared. Now differentiate this sign, so we have alpha and then a cosine of alpha x dx. Okay, so notice that this guy that I've underlined basically is just the i of alpha that we started with. isn't it and then let's try evaluating this guy so when at infinity sign will just keep oscillating between negative 1 and positive 1 the exponential will make everything decay so at at infinity everything goes to 0 at 0 the exponential is 1 but sign of 0 is 0 so again everything is 0 so in total both the times it's 0 so just forget this term I prime of alpha is negative alpha over two n, and then this guy, as I suggested, is I of alpha. Well, look at this. We have a differential equation in I of alpha. So now, I prime of alpha is, if you want to use baby notation, is d over d alpha of I of alpha. So what I can do is I can gather some terms, d of i of alpha divided by i of alpha because the differential equation is variable separable. We can do this: negative one over two n alpha d alpha, and then integrate indefinitely on both sides. So here we have natural log of i of alpha is equal to. Negative alpha squared over four n 
plus a constant of integration c now to solve for this plug in alpha equals zero so when alpha is equal to zero this term will go to zero we just have c now i of alpha when alpha equals zero is just putting zero here so we have you know i of zero basically is integral from zero to infinity the cosine will part will become one so e to the negative n x squared dx and this is just the gaussian integral with the extra factor of n which becomes one half square root of pi over n so natural log of one half square root pi over n that is the value of the constant of integration so just plug this in natural log of i of alpha is negative alpha squared over 4n plus natural log of half square root pi over n take the anti log on both sides we have i of alpha is equal to uh one half square root pi over n e to the negative alpha squared over 4n and notice that uh, our original integral was just i of alpha when alpha was pi so we can make that substitution now i of alpha when alpha is pi is just half square root of pi over n e to the negative pi squared over 4n and now the best part of this video is i mean fine we we know the value of integral from 0 to infinity e to the negative n x squared cosine of pi x dx we know the value of this but we also know the value i prime of alpha because i prime of alpha according to the differential equation we got is just negative alpha over 2n times i of alpha i of alpha was just this guy over here and i prime of alpha is precisely negative square uh, integral 0 to infinity x e to the negative n x squared sine of alpha x dx and this just has the value of negative alpha over 4 n square root pi over n e to the negative alpha squared over 4 n and again you can make a substitution of uh, you know alpha to pi i just cancel the negatives out you can make a substitution of alpha to pi and or, or any other constant and get that value but this is this is a beautiful result this and more generally i of alpha which is this and again it's another victory for uh, the leibniz rule So you, you see how powerful this method is and whenever in, a, in an integration you're doing you see this lingering x always the preferred method most of the time not always is Leibniz rule because then you can define a parameter alpha differentiate it and then get that x so in that case i prime of alpha would be something you would be looking forward to solve and assuming you you know i, I of alpha you can get I prime of alpha in that case so that's it for this video guys i hope you enjoyed it please like share, and subscribe to my channel guys recommend me to your friends spread the word of gamma di gamma in the math community and in the meantime stay home stay safe stay tuned and peace out